I thought it would be good to do a Victoria update, which of course is the the, the state that I'm from. Uh, what do they call it these days? The uh, Socialist People's Republic of Victoria, something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite known to be um, definitely uh, a name. A name like that would would label it well. <laughs> uh, well, we were told by our uh, dear leaders this week that uh, uh, with the release of the Victorian crime statistics that uh, the state is actually getting uh, safer with a 6.2% uh, drop in the uh, crime rate. And of course, the, the mainstream media ran with this, told us that you know, the, uh, the uh, crime wave that uh, has been hitting the state is was fake news. Uh, but of course, I actually looked into the crime statistics in detail and violent crime is actually, you know, which is what we're concerned about, is actually on the rise. And the uh, what accounted for the, the drop in crime was actually the 24% uh, drop in uh, arson. So, you know, sexual offences... Uh, uh, robberies and uh, also crimes of uh, d uh, deception, uh, they, they were all on, on the rise. And it was uh, no less than 24 hours after, you know, this, uh, you know, this, this, you know, spin was put on that, you know, we're living in a safer state now. Uh, there were two violent brawls that broke out in Melbourne. There was one on Thursday morning, uh, at uh, St Kilda Beach, where uh, a gr uh, group of youths described as uh, African in appearance uh, uh, s uh, started uh, assaulting and uh, robbing uh, uh, beachgoers as well as fighting with each other. And then there was a, on Friday afternoon, there was another brawl in, in Collingwood, and uh, th th that uh, th they were described by police as uh, being of uh, mixed. Uh, appearance. Now, the the one in uh, St Kilda that was uh, that was captured on uh, camera by one of the, the witnesses. So that's the uh, that, that's gained the most attention. The one that the one that was in Collingwood uh, wasn't. But it was basically, yeah. The the government told us like, look at these you know statistics that we've put out. You know, it, it, uh, you know it disproves everything. And yet, you know, twenty four hours later, the the horror of what's going on in Melbourne is uh, before us once again. We see this happening all the time where governments like to cherry pick figures that um, basically uh, prove their points. So we see this when it comes to even the budget or economics where they uh, pick the figures that they, they think represent um, great improvements and say, oh yeah, we're responsible for this happening. And the the stuff that isn't so good, they, they try and ignore. And the media obviously being on the side of Andrews uh, definitely did pick the, the figures that looked good rather than the figures that didn't. And as you said, that um, a big percentage of that was arson, that was, um, that was uh, the drop. I mean, it, it really says a lot, doesn't it? I mean, violent, uh, violent crimes are on a rise in Victoria, and, and the best way to, to know that is to actually go on the street and ask people themselves. I mean... I've seen a lot of footage where uh, you're getting many shop break-ins by the Apex gang, just people in the street. I mean, these guys are vicious. These guys would attack old ladies for, you know, $20, you know. I mean, they don't muck around. And they're, they're being used by the left as well. The, the left use these uh, criminals from minority groups and basically um, get them to turn, away, uh, turn against uh, decent Australians. I mean, the way they do this is, for instance, uh, with the Milo protests that we saw, they, they go over to their housing commission blocks and say, oh, guys, you know, we've got such a rally. You know, these guys are here to hurt you. They don't like you. You know, they're racist. They're, you know, bigots, whatever else. Oh, let's go and show them, you know, who's boss. And they go, oh, okay, you know, no worries, because they don't know any better. And then they get involved in violent outbursts. I mean, throwing rocks, you know, damaging property. Uh, the the Apex, band, Apex gang really needs to be sorted out. The situation needs to be handled. And you can't trust a Labor government to ever be tough on crime. They never will. And I think it's about time that Victoria becomes safe again, as the slogan says. I mean, people have just had enough of it. And too many innocent people 
uh, are being victimised and, and are getting hurt out of this. And I'm not saying that, you know, these two brawls, you know, in isolation, you know, d uh, disprove uh, statistics. I'm, uh, uh, like I said before, I actually looked at the statistics in detail and uh, it still shows that, you know, violent crime is on the rise. But, you know, there uh, you know, other yeah, evidence is, you know, there's suburbs in Melbourne, you know, such as, you know, Caroline Springs and Cranbourne, where, you know, there there's so many home invasions that, you know, residents are living in fear, they're sleeping with, you know, baseball bats under their bed, you know, some, you know, have basically had to, you know, flee like it's a, a, it's a war zone or, uh, or something, you know, there, there there's a lot of, you know, fear out there, uh, there and um you know it's not you know imagined you know pe people have been you know attacked on the street you know in their homes you know their their businesses uh have have been robbed it's it's not a it's not a good place that melbourne's in that's exactly right and these people think they can get away with it that's the problem i mean they've come here and they've seen our our government basically ignore problems that they are committing so, I mean, this gives them a free pass and they think that they're, they're gods, that they're warriors here. They can do anything they want without any consequences. So, I mean, what kind of message does it say to the bad people that are doing these crimes, that are getting a free pass, but not only to them, but also the, the victims, the good people that are suffering, that are being ignored by the government because these people are being allowed to participate in these crimes and aren't getting big consequences out of it because, oh, too much paperwork or, oh, we haven't got such and such evidence or, you know, it, there's, always, uh, there's always red tape involved, political correctness involved and it, it just seems that nobody wants to do the hard yards to sort out such a problem that's plaguing the state. Uh, and, and of course, that was uh, that wasn't the only news to come out of Victoria this week. Uh, Daniel Andrews he didn't like the uh, East West Link, so he uh, spent one billion dollars uh, worth of taxpayers' money not to build it. But he likes the uh, Westgate Tunnel uh, project, which he's building at the moment, which he is going to fund by uh, increasing tolls on our existing uh, City Link uh, motorway, and uh, they're they're going to be increased. Uh, 4.25% per year uh, compounding and tolls are, are going to be extended to I, I believe 2045 this is to secure $4 billion worth of uh, uh, funding uh, from Transurban, who is the company that lobbied for this project, and also the cost of the road has, has blown out from 5.5 billion to 6.7 billion. So, I, I'm all for building more roads, but you know, Daniel Andrews, he seems to have negotiated a terrible deal. Well, it does seem terrible. I mean, that's a lot of money. Um... I mean, many people are, are looking back at the East-West Link and thinking that was such a better plan, um, considering on the location, uh, what that would have done um, jobs-wise, just just the infrastructure in general. And they're looking at this and they're thinking, well, what are we really getting for our money here? And not only that, the people have to pay for it um, by the increase in, uh, in the ongoing tolls that they're, they're going to have to... I mean, this is going to slug a lot of people. So, I mean, this could be something that really affects him. Uh, I mean, people, one thing people hate is tolls. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it could be a reality that, you know, it's it's just a matter of um, of how things work and, you know, they're there and we can't do anything. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone can really come out and say, oh, you know what, I, I, I love paying, you know, such and such a week on, on the ongoing tolls that, to and from work that I have to use. I mean, this this is something that really affects people and they might be able to uh, make an impact on the ballot box. I mean, Victorian election, it, it's not that far down the track, so he has to really be careful um, in where he's treading here. And another bit of news from Victoria that's been overlooked is that the CFMEU, they're uh, blockading the uh, container terminal uh, in Melbourne. Uh, the reason that they're doing this is because a uh, union employee was uh, sacked for, uh, they failed a security clearance because of a criminal conviction, which, 
you know, on the face of it, it seems like, well, if they needed a security clearance to do the job and they failed it, then obviously they're not good for the job. But of course, you know, the, the CFMU, you know, can't have that and, you know, loves to throw their weight around, as we know. And so they've been uh, blockading of millions of dollars worth of uh, containers there that's been uh, si uh, sitting idle there. And uh, the Victoria Police and uh, uh, Daniel Andrews's government are just not doing anything about it. Well, Daniel Andrews says, oh, we need to, you know, uh, try and find a conciliation to it. We, as, so, so what, the, the Container Corporation should just, you know, uh, be uh, engage in negotiation with, you know, people who've, you know, been engaging in, you know, thuggery and intimidation? That, do that doesn't seem like, you know, you've, a, a, a good a good way to uh you know bring parties together like well the only reason why we're here is because you know one, uh, one side you know threw their weight around it's a very bad look and the cfmeu um i mean they're they're right the worst of the worst when it comes to these unions and the Andrews government won't do anything about it. No Labor government will do anything about it because they are so uh, beholden and um, and owned by the unions. I mean, the unions give them so much money um, when it comes to campaigns, elections and whatnot. So there's no way that you'd ever see a Labor Party leader um, being genuine and doing what's right uh, when it comes to unions. I mean, they will always back them no matter how nasty uh, they are being, how dirty the games they're playing, and uh, it's just Labor Party politics. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.